We are joined now by the retired General Wesley Clark, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. And uh, what about that as a first point, General, the idea that, you know, if the hostages are going to be released, Israel would have to withdraw from, from Gaza? Well, I'd, I'd be very surprised if Israel would withdraw from Gaza. Look, uh, this problem with Hamas has been going on for more than 10 years. There have been previous military engagements in every case. Uh, Israel has backed off, and uh, and then Hamas has come back tougher, meaner, uh, more retributive. And so at this point, Israel really doesn't see that it has a choice of backing off. Of course, there's a lot of concern about the hostages, and they want the hostages back. But as a, as a general matter, for Israel to back off means Hamas wins. And so we just had the Hamas spokesman on. And he says it's a war of extermination. The war of extermination was totally started by Hamas with its brutal attack on October 7th, designed uh, cynically to use the people of Gaza as human shields, as hostages, and then to hold both the Israeli public and the American political uh, system hostage to these pictures of the of what's happening in there. So this is a, the most cynical, cruel campaign that you could imagine from Hamas. So yes, Israel will want to finish the job. Seems like we're getting mixed signals as to whether or not there really is progress in these talks. I mean, the president of Egypt said a truce could be reached in the next few days. President Biden got a lot of people talking and out for ice cream here in New York the other day and 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 said this. Let's listen. I hope by the beginning of the weekend, I mean, the end of the weekend, at least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. Next Monday's coming soon because then you have, to your point, the Hamas representatives who say, no, we're nowhere close, really, essentially what they're saying. So what do you think is really going on here? I think there's a lot of outside pressure on from all sides on this, uh, as well as the internal pressure. So Hamas is feeling uh, put upon by the Israeli military attacks. No doubt they've been effective, and they're hurting Hamas very badly. Israel has a lot of internal pressure uh, from right, uh, who don't want anything stopped and want to destroy the Palestinians in Gaza, or at least Hamas for sure, and then don't accept the two-state solution. And then there are the, right. those in Israel who would accept a two-state solution and who want the hostages back and who see that this is all this is really uh, contributing to, to helping uh, Bibi Netanyahu remain in office. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Iranian view and the Russian view. And remember, the Russians called Hamas leaders to Moscow. Yeah. So Russia's involved in this. And um, all in all, when you look at it all wrapped up, it all comes down to pressure on President Biden. Because uh, what happened in the Michigan primary that uh, was just reported here uh, it is not, it's not private. Uh, this is discussed around the world. And I was just uh, in Europe last week. Everybody's concerned about American politics. It turns out American politics is one of the key fields of, of, of struggle in the future of mankind right mm -hmm. now. Everybody's looking at it. And so uh, this battle between Israel and Hamas, right. the role... President Biden and trying to bring a, a truce there and a peace and a ceasefire is uh, is a part and parcel of a bigger struggle between Russia and the West. Well, let's talk about that American political angle just for a minute, General, before we let you go, because, um, I mean, you're right. These world leaders, I'm sure you ha have close contact with or are, are worried about what might happen. Some would say they want to see another Trump administration, I'm sure. That's a bit of view outside of the United States for some time. On President Biden, though, this pressure that you talked about is real. I mean, we just had the former congressman on from Michigan in this vote last night. So what type of a course, they want a course correction, essentially. You heard what he said, probably. They want them, him to change course. And I'm wondering, where, where's his opening or opportunity uh, to do that? Because I told the congressman, you know, he would argue he's already doing that in the way he's pushing Israel here the last few weeks. Absolutely. You know, I look at like putting a key in a lock. Sometimes a key doesn't fit and you sort of jiggle it back and forth, yeah, yeah. up and down, sideways. <laughs> uh, this is people talking to people and putting pressure and trying this idea, that idea out, giving it time, seeing what happens next week, what's the latest casualty, what, what was done yet, how bad is Hamas hurting, what's the protest in Israel like, how strong is BB, lots of variables cooking in here, everybody trying to make it happen. And at the same time, the United States does have 
a long-term treaty of support with Israel. We're not going to abandon Israel. Right. And at the same time, we have to take recognition of the American political system. There's a dynamic here uh, with Arab Americans. It wasn't here when the United States recognized Israel in 1948. And it mm -hmm. does have an impact on American leadership because American foreign policy is a reflection of U.S. domestic policy. Yep. We're and, the most important country and, in the world. And everybody wants to influence right. our policy. Our American and, voters and young voters, as we said, just in general, have feel a lot differently about the war than some other people in the, in the country do. But, General, thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.